This is the Sabbath School lesson for the first quarter, 2022. Welcome to Lesson 9, Jesus the Perfect Sacrifice, ready for teaching on February 26. It's from the series In These Last Days, The Message of Hebrews. The author is Dr. Felix Cortez, who is Associate Professor of New Testament Literature in the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. And I'm your reader for today, Dr. Percy Harold. Tuesday, February 22, Jesus' Perfect Sacrifice. Read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 27, and Hebrews 10:10. 10, 10. How is Jesus' sacrifice described in these passages? Hebrews 7:27, Who does not need daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. And chapter 10, verse 10, by that will we have been sacrificed through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The Levitical priests, who were many in numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, we read in Hebrews 7.23, are contrasted with Jesus who lives forever and has an eternal priesthood, as we read in Hebrews 7 verses 24 and 25. But he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Levitical priests daily in Hebrews 7.27 and every year in Hebrews 9.25 offered gifts and sacrifices that cannot perfect the conscience of the worshipper. We read in Hebrews 9 verse 9, it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. And Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 to 4, for the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Jesus, however, offered himself once for all, a single sacrifice, as we read before in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. And we also read about it in Hebrews 10, verses 12 to 14. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. That uh, cleanses our consciences, as you read in Hebrews 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And Hebrews 10, verses 1 to 10. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the 
volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God, previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sins you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law, Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. And he puts away sin, as we read in Hebrews 9.26. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus' sacrifice is superior to the sacrifice of animals because Jesus was the Son of God, as we read in Hebrews 7, 26-28. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected for ever." who perfectly fulfilled God's will, as we read in Hebrews 10, 5-10. The description of the sacrifice of Jesus as having occurred once for all has several important implications. First, Jesus' sacrifice is perfectly effective and never to be surpassed. The sacrifices of the Levitical priests were repeated because they were not effective otherwise. Would they not have ceased to be offered, as it says in Hebrews 10.2, since the worshippers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sins? Second, all the different kinds of sacrifices of the Old Testament found their fulfilment at the cross. Thus, Jesus not only cleanses us from sin, as we read in Hebrews 9.14, but he also provides sanctification, as we read in Hebrews 10.10-14, 10 by putting sin away from our lives, as we read in Hebrews 9.26. Let's just check each of those right now. Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ who, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And Hebrews 10, 10 to 14. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And Hebrews 9.26, he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Before the priests could approach God in the sanctuary and minister in behalf of their fellow human beings, they had to be cleansed and sanctified or consecrated. And there's a whole description of that in Leviticus chapter 8 and Leviticus chapter 9. Jesus' sacrifice cleanses us and consecrates us, as we've just read in Hebrews 10, 10 to 14, so that we may approach God with confidence as we read in Hebrews 10, 19 to 23. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And serve him as a royal priesthood, as we've read in 
chapter 9, verse 14, but also in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Finally, Jesus' sacrifice also provides nourishment for our spiritual life. It provides an example that we need to observe and follow. Thus, Hebrews invites us to fix our eyes upon Jesus, especially the events of the cross, and follow his lead, as we read in Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 13, verses 12 and 13. So, Hebrews 12, beginning at verse 1, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls." You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And chapter 13, beginning at verse 12, Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. And so to finish today, The cross is the basis for all the benefits that God bestows upon us. It provides purification from sin, sanctification to serve, and nourishment to grow. How can we better experience what we have been given in Jesus? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.